Hello students, welcome to Ipart Sala program. I am Dr. Krishan Kumar, Assistant Professor in Public Administration. Today we will discuss Industrial Development Bank of India. In this module, we will discuss the organization, structure, history, establishment, and role of Industrial Development Bank of India. Let us start with introduction. The Industrial Development Bank of India was established on 1st July 1964 by an Act of Parliament as a wholly owned subsidiary of the Reserve Bank of India. The ownership of IDBI was transferred to Government of India on 16 February 1976 and it was made the principal financial institution for coordinating the activities of institution engaged in financing, promoting and developing industry in the country. Establishment of the IDBI Bank IDBI Bank is an Indian government-owned financial service company, formerly known as Industrial Development Bank of India, headquartered in Mumbai. It was established in 1964 by an Act of Parliament to provide credit and other financial facilities for the development of fledging Indian industry. IDBI Bank is on par with nationalized banks and the SBI group as far as government ownership is concerned. It is one among the 27 commercial banks owned by Government of India. IDBI Bank is considered as a Government of India owned bank. History of Industrial Development Bank of India Prior to setting up of IDBI, a fairly wide network of financial institutions have emerged in India as a result of deliberate and purposive efforts made by government and RBI after independence. Though these institutions have served with a degree of success to meet the growing requirements of expanding industrial sector, but they didn't adequately meet the growing requirement of long-term finance and of rendering promotional services to the industry. There was a need for coordinating machinery which could establish working relationship with other financial institutions and build up a pattern of inter-institutional cooperation that can facilitate the evaluation of rational and cohesive structure of financial institutions. Adapted to the changing needs of emerging industrial structure with its growing complexity of interrelationship. It was regarded as a public financial institution in terms of provisions of Section 4A of the Companies Act 1956. It continued to serve as a DFI for 40 years till the year 2004 when it was transformed into a bank, Industrial Development Bank of India Limited. In response to the felt need and on commercial prudence, it was decided to transform IDBI into a bank. Industrial Development Bank Act, Industrial Development Bank Transfer of Undertaking and Repeal Act 2003 was passed, repealing the Industrial Development Bank of India Act 1964. After its transformation into a commercial bank, the bank has access to low-cost funds in the form of current account and savings account. In terms of the provisions of Repeal Act, a new company under the name of Industrial Development Bank of India Limited was incorporated as a government company under the Companies Act 1956 on September 27, 2004. Thereafter, undertaking of IDBI was transferred to and vested in IDBI Limited with effect from October 1, 2004. Merger of IDBI Bank Limited with IDBI Limited towards achieving this faster inorganic growth of the bank. IDBI Bank Limited, a wholly owned subsidiary of IDBI Limited, was amalgamated with IDBI Limited in terms of the provision of Section 4A of the Banking Regulation Act 1949, providing for voluntary amalgamation of two banking companies. 
uh, the merger became effective from April to 2005. Change of name of IDBI Limited to IDBI Bank Limited. In order that name of bank truly reflect the function it is carrying on, the name of bank was changed to IDBI Bank Limited and the new name became effective from 7 May 2008 upon issue of fresh certificate of incorporation by registrar of companies Maharashtra. The bank has been accordingly functioning in present name in its present name of IDBI Bank Limited. Narsimhan Committee. In order to make IDBI IDBI's coordinating role more effective, the Narsimhan Committee in 1991 has suggested that the bank that the IDBI should give up its direct financing function and perform only promotional apex and refinancing role in respect of other institutions like SFC and SIDBI. The direct lending function should be interested to a separate finance company especially set up for this purpose. Objectives of Industrial Development Bank of India Number 1. Regulation, supervision and coordination of the working of other financial institutions such as IFCI, ICICI, QTI, LIC, commercial banks and SFCs. Number 2. Supplementing the resources of other financial institutions and thereby widening the scope of their assistance. Number 3. Planning, promotion and development of key industries and diversification of industrial growth of the country. Number 4. Devising and enforcing a system of industrial growth that conforms to national priorities, organization, structure and management. IDBI consists of a board of directors consisting of a chairman and managing director appointed by the government of India, a deputy governor of the Reserve Bank of India nominated by that bank and 20 other directors are nominated by the central government. The board constituted an executive committee consisting of 10 directors including the chairman and managing director. The executive committee is empowered to sanction financial assistance. The head office of IDBI is located in Mumbai. The bank have five regional offices. One is in Kolkata, Guwahati, New Delhi, Chennai and Mumbai. Besides, the bank have 21 branch offices. Main functions of Industrial Development Bank of India. The main functions of IDBI as its name suggests is to finance industrial enterprise such as manufacturing, mining, processing, shipping and other transport industries and hotel industry. Broadly, the function of IDBI can be classified into the following categories which are number one, coordinating, financing function and promotional function. First, we will discuss coordinating function. The IDBI coordinates the functions and operations of all the financial institutions including the IFCI, ICICI, LIC, GIC and UTI into a single integrated financial structure so that each may contribute to the total effect and the growth of the economy. To serve as the apex institution for term finance for industry to coordinate the working of in institutions engaged in financing, promoting or developing industry and to assist in the development of these institutions. IDBI is vested with the responsibility of coordinating the working institutions engaged in financing, promoting and developing industries. It has evolved as an appropriate machinery for this purpose. 
the appraisal and supervision of project assisted on a consortium basis one coordinated to avoid duplication work and delay finance financing function the main function of idbi as its name suggests is to finance industrial enterprise such as manufacturing mining processing shipping and other transport industries and hotel industry as an industrial financer the idbi would assist all the all the deserving project which experience enormous problem in assembling funds from normal channels its endeavor in this regard is to ensure that no worthwhile project howsoever small is allowed to languish for want of or insufficiency of institutional support the bank can assist a project directly and indirectly financial assistance sanctioned by idbi consists of broadly two groups that is uh, direct assistance and indirect assistance first we will discuss direct assistance financial assistance to industrial project are given by idbi in similar ways in which other financial institutions normally provide it grants direct assistance by way of project loans underwriting of and direct subscription to industrial securities soft loans technical refunds loans and equipment finance loans it subscribes to purchase and underwrites the issue of stocks shares and bonds of debentures the loans and advances which idbi makes to any industrial concern may be converted into equity stocks and shares at a later date by idbi the bank is also empowered to guarantee loans raised by industrial concern in open market from scheduled banks the state cooperative banks ifci and other notified financial institutions idbi can also accept discount or rediscount bona fide commercial bills or promising notes of industrial concern in direct lending the bank resembles ifci and icici however it has greater freedom of operation and can endeavor to secure collaboration of other institutions in the field of technical scrutiny and financial partnership indirect assistance industrial development bank of india can assist industrial concern in an indirect manner also that is through other institutions idbi assistance to other institution also includes its rediscounting scheme firstly it can refinance term loan to industrial concern repayable within 2 to 25 years given by the ifci the state financial corporation and other financial institutions secondly it can refinance term loans repayable between 3 to 10 years given by scheduled banks or state cooperative banks thirdly it can refinance export credit given by the scheduled banks and state cooperative banks finally idbi has subscribed to the stocks shares bonds and debentures of ifci the state financial corporation and other notified financial institutions so as to increase their financial resources and enable them to provide greater assistance to industry promotional function promotional function under this category includes such activity as marketing and investment research and survey as well as technological studies it can also provide technical and administrative assistance to any industrial concern for promotion management or expansion idbi also plans promotes and develops industries to fill gaps in the industrial structure of the country during the many years of its operations idbi evolved number of innovative schemes of assistance and undertook various promotional activity to meet the growing needs of industrial sector additional functions of idbi these are as follows number 
two grant loans and advances to IFCL, IFCI, SFCs or any other financial institution by way of refinance, refinancing of loans granted by such institutions which are repayable within 25 years to grant loans and advance to scheduled banks or state cooperative banks by way of refinancing of loans granted by such institutions which are repayable in 15 years to grant loans and advances to IFCI, SFCs and other financial institutions, scheduled banks, state cooperative banks by way of refinancing of loans granted by such institutions to industrial concern for exports. To discount or rediscount bills of industrial concerns, to underwrite or to subscribe to shares or debentures of industrial concerns, to subscribe to or purchase stock, shares, bonds and debentures of other financial institutions, to grant line of credit or loans and advances to other financial institutions such as IFCI, SFCs, etc. To grant loans to any industrial concerns. To guarantee deferred payment due from any industrial concern. To guarantee loans raised by industrial concerns in the market or from institutions. To provide consultancy and merchant banking services in or outside India. To provide technical, legal, marketing and administrative assistance to any industrial concern or person for promotion, management or expansion of any industry. Planning, promoting and developing industries to fill up gaps in the industrial structure in India. To act as trustee for the holders of debentures or other securities. The net worth of IDBI Bank on 31st March 2008 stood at 8,821.96 crores which increased to 14,567.5 crores in 2011. It further increased to 22,654.26 crores in 2015. The increasing trend in the net worth of IDBI Bank during the last five years shows the good financial position of the bank. Success and achievement of Industrial Development Bank of India. Number one, development of small scale industries. The IDBI met the loan requirement of small scale industries in India by setting up of Small Industries Development Fund. In May 1986, the National Equity Fund scheme in 1988 and the Voluntary Executive Corporation shall. Number two, single window assistance scheme. The bank introduced a single window scheme for grant of term loan and working capital to new, teeny and small scale enterprises. In India, one third of the small scale industries obtain financial assistance from IDBI. Soft Loan Scheme In 1976, the IDBI introduced the Soft Loan Scheme for providing concessional, concessional advance to productive units selected industries. The facility is available to jute, sugar, cement, cotton, textiles and other engineering industries for innovating and modernizing their plants. Under this scheme, the IDBI provides loan to industries at interest rate of 7.5% for the period 12 to 15 years. Loan under CGT, CGT SME. The bank provided collateral free loan up to rupees 1 crore are for new and aspiring SME entrepreneurs willing to set up a new unit or to start a new business and also for those entrepreneurs who wish to access bank funding for their business but are not able to provide any collateral. Trade Finance and Forex The bank has a robust and flexible system to take care of different trade finance related needs of the customers. It has dedicated officers for 
handling different activities related to trade finance like offering bank guarantees, issuing letter of credits for both local and foreign trade. All activities related to foreign exchange are duly taken care of by the bank. Specialized Structure Products The bank also offers specialized structure products of SMEs who have a relationship with its corporate clients. SMEs that are part of the company's value chain can avail structured product at competitive terms and conditions which improve their cash flow sustainability, cash flow substantially. Implementation of government's MSME package. IDBI Bank has effectively implemented the government's MSME package. Various measures that the bank has initiated under the package include grant of need-based ad hoc working capital demand loan, increase in working capital limits, reduction or relaxation in margin, extension of moratorium period, and rescheduling facing of turn loans extra. Adverse impact of IDBI. Though these institutions have served with a degree of success to meet the growing requirement of expanding industrial sector, but they did not adequately meet the requirement of long-term finance and of rendering promotional services to industry. Number two, statutory obligations and traditions of these financial institutions were serious constraints in this regard. Moreover, their overlapping services created confusion in the minds of borrower and there was no effective mechanism to coordinate and integrate the functioning of diverse institutions in the field. Conclusion Over the past five decades, the IDBI has developed into a mature and focused institution with a clearer idea of its role in industrial development. The IDBI monitors the quality of project and is very conscious of the need to improve the operational efficiency. The IDBI has made a significant contribution in the field of industrialization and export promotion from the countries. This bank is the biggest specialized financial institution of the country. The direct and indirect financial assistance by the IDBI is quite impressive. However, it is criticized on the following ground. Most of the financial assistance provided by the IDBI has in favor of some big industries and ignored the financial needs of the small-scale industries. The role of IDBI in underwriting of shares and debentures of industrial concern is not increasing. Though the IDBI covered a lot of districts in most backward area of, of the country, there is still a wide range of disparities in the financial assistance to backward districts of many states. IDBI has cumulatively sanctioned rupees 5,082,105 crore and disbursed rupees 3,76,107 crore up to end March 2008, which is 66% of the sanctioned amount. IDBI claimed the largest share of 33.4% among AFIs. The process of liberalization has brought in systemic change in the openness of IDBI. In tandem with the emerging needs of the industry in the new competitive financial environment, IDBI has reoriented its policies with much sharper customer focus. As it has entered the next millennium, the IDBI looks at its mission in the decade ahead as one of the maximizing its development 245 impact healthy growth of development financial institution and rapid strides in industrial development. The major sector seeking assistance from the institution would continue to be infrastructure sector. Beside IDBI strategy would also be to increase its assistance to high growth oriented segments like information technology, pharmaceuticals, and food processing industries. The launch of Technology Upgradation Fund Scheme for textile industry would generate new investment demand from different segments of the textile sector for modernization and upgradation aimed at achieving global standards. Fund-based business would continue to be the core activity of IDBI in the coming years. While project financing would remain the key segment in fund-based business, the bank would also target well-rated corporate for assistance 
under non project finance scheme and in the form of structured product instead of plain loans products assistance in the form of tradable instruments may offer an easy exit route as debt market develops and gets deeper to augment overall profitability idbi would increasingly focus on fee based activities like corporate advisory services credit syndication debenture trusteeship foreign exchange forex services etc with a view to perform these channelizing function effectively idbi formulated suitable strategies and op operational 246 policies with respect to sanction of assistance and its utilization forms of assistance and its purpose as also with respect to sectoral regional and industrial distribution of the assistance the bank has been found adhering to norms and sanction assistance only to those fulfilling the, these norms following its assistance policies the idbi pumped in burgeoning amount of funds to meet the growing industry demand it is interesting to observe that the bank has introduced a slew of innovative products and services to cater to the various needs of upcoming enterprise of plan priority however loan constitute the predominant form of assistance of idbi this can be explained in area by minimum risk high core competence and scope for better earnings it is intriguing to note that quite a large proportion of sanctions and assistance has remained unutilized for various reasons including time consuming complex lending procedures it is therefore suggested that disbursement procedures should be re-examined thoroughly and as far as possible the same be simplified what is most striking to note is that the bank has yet not accorded serious attention to underwriting business and has failed to develop equity culture in its operation primarily because of its obsession with avoidance of risk nevertheless idbi has devoted its resources for financing upcoming industrial projects the thrust of the bank in recent year has been on infrastructural and core sector for the few industrially advanced states of the country continue to receive greater attention of the idbi one of the major factors responsible for this tendency has been absence of any explicit policy guidelines being provided by government regarding assistance to relatively underdeveloped states as a result idbi has followed the line of least assistance and extended assistance where it could do that most conveniently in its india to meet the competitive challenges and to provide wide variety of products and services to customer under one umbrella and to economize on cost of operations the idbi is presently seized with the task of transforming itself to an universal bank and for that matter it has already started holding discussion with the rbi on the possible regulatory regime once it converts itself into a full fledged bank the bank is also negotiating with foreign management consultants to hire one of them who could help it in formulating the universal banking strategy to be highly competitive and more useful the existing role of the bank will have to be rationalized it will have to focus on lending business with market orientation its risk identification project management skills and strengthening of the infrastructural network idbi should undertake the underwriting business on a large scale with a view to nurse new and nascent industrial units this will certainly solve the financial problem of industrial enterprise and also bolster up the new issue activity also bolster up the new issue activity which has been sagging in recent years idbi in its new universal banking form can go a long way in solving the problem of industrial finance in india in a big way thanks